Hey guys, Cartex710 coming at you with another video. It's been about a week since I posted my last video where I got to show you my personal collection of Derek Jeter's as well as uh, you got to hear my rant. Uh, I was pretty discouraged about the uh, 2019 requirement for eBay to start charging sales tax to certain states and uh, Washington, where I live, is one of the states I was affected. Um, I've had a chance to do some little research as well as um, do some shopping. I went on a little bit of a, a spending spree, so I guess the sales tax didn't really slow me down at all after all. But uh, what I found was the sales tax is actually an eBay imposed sales tax. So now when you buy a card off eBay, you'll get an email uh, confirmation with the, the amount that you actually paid for the card. On a separate transaction in your PayPal account, you'll see a card, you'll see a charge that says eBay Incorporated, and that is the actual sales tax that uh, is owed for your particular state. Um, I ordered another card off of uh, another site other than eBay, in which case I use Four Sharp Corners, and Four Sharp Corners did not uh, charge me a sales tax. So I like using them um, for Sharp Corners because they offer nice discounts. They, you'll get email promotions saying um, PSA graded eights and higher. There'll be a 10 or 15% discount. So uh, it's pretty nice. The reason why they chart, they specifically give you a 10 or 15% discount is that is an amount that they um, are spared paying eBay in the form of seller's fees if they sell their, their cards on eBay versus off their website directly. Um, so if I can save 10 or 15% from four shop corners directly, as well as avoid paying the 10% sales tax, that's like a 24 to 25% savings for me. So only trouble is uh, I really don't know of many of the sites, uh, sellers that have their own site. Uh, I get cards, business cards, along with a lot of my purchases, but those basically list the seller's name and maybe their, their email address, but not necessarily, they don't have their own website. So they're still... Uh, at the mercy of selling on eBay and getting charged that sales tax uh, that I have to pay. So if you guys know of any other third-party sites that have their own site, own checkout process, uh, please let me know. Uh, I can't use uh, COMC, which is Check Out My Cards, because that happens to be a retailer that's actually in Washington. So I would get charged sales tax if I bought off their site directly. But Outside of uh, COMC and Four Sharp Corners, if you know of any other vendors that uh, know their have their actual website, actual checkout process, please let me know in the comments below. Okay, and uh, oh, and one other solution I found out, at least in the short term, is um, PWCC, which is one of the more popular consigners uh, on eBay, uh, is based out of Oregon, uh, which is just three hours from here. Um, if you've ever checked out their site, besides consigning, they're actually doing some things for the hobby that, um, is what I feel is going to take the hobby to the next level, whether good or bad. But one of the things that they're doing is they were in the midst of, uh, creating what they call it the PWCC vault. And what that is, it's like a depository, like, um, some people like, in in certain cities, you can go to like a premium wine shop and they'll have their own private uh, cellar where like um, people can rent boxes to actually store their wines at the perfect temperature. And um, basically whenever they come to the, the wine shop, they basically go to their depository, kind of like a safety deposit box, and they can get whatever wines they have. It's just another place to store them that's going to be temperature safe. Um, relatively safe because it is in a business same thing with cigars uh, if you've ever been to a cigar humidor that has um, depositories uh, you'll have certain frequent users come and they'll open up this lock box and it has their own personal storage of cigars that uh, the cigar shop might have rented out their space well that's what pwcc was doing uh, with the vault service in uh, the facility out of oregon and I was supposed to open in the second quarter of 2019. I was actually looking into it because it was uh, basically saved me from uh, having to use a safety deposit box at a bank where you have to deal with banker's hours and you couldn't see your cards anyways. Um, so hopefully this comes through. But PWCC 
was in the midst. They have a little video, if you check out their site, of their vault, which basically is these doors here, and their facility, and they want to show you like a little video of their construction. Um, like I said, this was supposed to open in sec the second quarter of 2019, which would basically put it at about March or so. But uh, they actually took advantage of this. And if you take a look here, besides the services included, the vault is located in Oregon, a sales tax-free state. All active purchase shipped with a vault delivery address will reflect Oregon's 0% sales tax rate. This is true for purchases from PWCC or any other venue. Uh, what that means is if you get a personal vault, they give you a address and a vault number that's personalized. And uh, if you buy a card off eBay or any other site that charges sales tax, instead of having it delivered to your Washington address, you can have it delivered directly to this Oregon vault number. And they will actually store it, uh, scan it. Um, and they actually, uh, the way that they, they charge their fees is uh, it's they charge you 1% of the market value of whatever it is you purchase. That's actually what they take, uh, I'm assuming in the form of a credit card, as well as they insure uh, the first year is 0.5% uh, of insurance value will be charged up front for the first full year of storage. So basically it's 1.5% of the value of your purchases or, or whatever it is you have in there. Um, pretty brilliant i did reach out to him several times to get some clarification to find out if it is truly as easy as that um the vault in actuality is not really ready for what they were planning on using it for um eventually after the uh, the start of the second quarter uh you'll actually be able to send your own personal collection items higher end collection items uh to be stored at the vault much like a safety deposit box so um and what they do is they, they scan it. So when you log into your account, you'll have visibility front and back. You can sell cards directly uh, from your vault, whether it's if you have PWCC do it, or they'd be, they would agree to ship it to any other um, third party site that's gonna sell it, even if it's back to yourself. Um, like I said, it hasn't worked out yet. I did sign up though, and uh, I have my address and my vault number. And now all I have to do is uh, make my first uh, high-end purchase and have it delivered directly to them. My only withdrawal back, only con of this is the fact that I won't get the card in hand first. You know, unfortunately, and for me, because I like to show the cards off on, on YouTube, um, I'm going to have to work that out. But in the meantime, at least I'll be able to purchase it, you know, basically own it, and I have it under my my collection and uh you know the logistics of how i'm gonna get it back in my hands is something that ought to be worked out but i was pretty excited about this anyhow uh, let's get back to collecting so in this past week i picked up this one just from my own personal collection it's just uh these cards the tops living set the Derek cheater or any tops living set raw uh, any cards about 10 to 14 bucks. Um, I got this one purchased slabbed as a PSA 9, and uh, I actually got it through an auction and paid less than 10 bucks, so why not? This is one of the few Topps Living sets where the card actually does somewhat look like the, the actual player. Some of the ones I've seen are I'm like, that doesn't look like the player at all, but PSA 9, pretty nice. Um, on my New Year's video, I talked about one alternate way of getting uh, some good collectibles or saving some money on certain players uh, is by going taking a look at their minor league cards, if any. And I had earlier shown the Mariano Rivera 1990 Diamond cards and the 92 Front Row Derek Jeter, where they're showing their minor league uh, pictures and uniforms. So this past week, did a little research, and I got the... 1981 TCMA Calrican Jr. Uh, from a team called the Rochester Red, Red Wings. Um, 1981, there's another set titled WTF of Calrican Jr. It's a black and white uh, picture. Uh, pretty ugly, actually. And uh, the amount that people that sellers are charging for, like, even PSA 7s and PSA uh, 6s, is, it really is WTF. You know, like, how the hell do you come up with that price? But 
this at least I was able to get a PSA 10. Uh, wasn't cheap, but um, you know I wanted a 91 traded uh, Cal Ripken Jr. and a PSA 10, which I haven't gotten yet. But um, in the meantime, this is a nice, nice alternative. One of my favorite players of the of the 90s, Don Mattingly. A 1981 Nashville Sounds. This is also in a PSA 10. Um, really like this one too because obviously the sponsor was from Arby's. And I don't know what that is. Maybe it's their their mascot or something. Uh, the back, it's almost like a Arby's uh, ad pretty much because it has some of the locations in the Tennessee, Tennessee area. Uh, makes me wonder if any of these things are still open, but still pretty cool. I could only find this one in a PSA 8, but still, I took a good look at this, and it's a pretty good looking card. It could be an 8 because, you know, this green has some, I don't know if they're print marks or, anyways, Roger Clemens from the Pawtucket, Pawtucket Red Sox. One thing I thought that was pretty cool is if you look at the P here on this hat, it looks just like the lettering of the Boston B, except it's a P, but it's their minor league team. Pawtucket. I don't even know where that is. But... And another one was the 1985 Chong Modesto A's uh, Mark McGuire. Um, this is spelt correctly. There is another card that looks just like this that uh, has his name misspelt. And it'll say in here uh, either incorrect spelling or misspelt. And those, of course, are more valuable. But still, I was able to get this in the PSA 10, even though... For 1985, the picture's not very good. But look how skinny Mark McGuire was. That was before he got a hold of the, the juice, I guess. Um, I reached out to uh, Nate from Tops 85401, asking him if Barry Bonds had a minor league card that he knew of. And he actually told me that while he was actually in the minor leagues, uh, he does not have a card. But they, there were some cards after the fact, that well after he was a... Uh, a major league star where um, it showed him in cards with minor league uniforms, but they were like, you know, dated 97, much, uh, I'm sorry, not 97, like in the 2000s, I think, well after he was in the major leagues. It's just like a novelty, but it wasn't a legitimate minor league card. And my last one is the 87 Bellingham Mariners, Ken Griffey Jr., uh, PSA 9. Uh, look how young he looks. I mean, his nickname was The Kid, but this could be as good a card as any as to why. Uh, his dad played for the majors too, but what's cool about this one is this is in Bellingham, which is uh, in the state of Washington, right near uh, the Canadian border. But still, this is the first team that he played for. I think he was... If this was 87, and he was born in 69... I don't know, he was, what, 17, 18? I'm not really good at math, but still. Um, there's a couple other uh, Ken Griffey Jr. minor league cards, but uh, this would be his first. And that's pretty much it for today. I uh, just wanted to share with you. Oh, uh, one last. I had one user reach out to me and ask uh, what type of plastic holders do I use? to encase my, my PSA cards. I got these off eBay, but if it's they're the perfect fit innovation sleeve holders, these are uh, specifically for PSA graded cards. They fit really well, not too tight, not too loose, and uh, easy to put on. I bought in a couple other um, sleeves where either they were way too loose, I hate having that excess flap around the, the PSA case, or they were way too tight, like it was an act of God just to slide them into the, the case, or if not the case tore, which would piss me off. But um, These fit perfectly. They saw them in really weird lot numbers, like rounds of 50, rounds of 75. They don't sell them in rounds of 100. Uh, still, they're pretty reasonable. And once again, Perfect Fit Innovations. There's a website here that says perfectfitsleeves.com, but it is a Canadian company, so you're better off selling it, uh, excuse me, better off buying it off eBay. Um, but that's it. Um, 
Like I said, if you guys know of any other sites outside of uh, eBay and Four Sharp Corners that has their own site, uh, please let me know. Um, I'm still in shopping for my first big ticket purchase to send to my uh, PWCC vault. And uh, I will update you guys once that process happens and keep it to date. And like I said, the only negative withdrawal back from, from doing that now is I won't get these high-end cards or these expensive uh, cards in hand at the moment. Uh, I got to figure out a way for uh, once I find out a little more on how I can actually get my the card back in my possession or if it's to remain locked in the vault and I'm able to only view it in the form of a online online scan but uh, at least it's something you know on a it would definitely encourage me to proceed with buying cards in the two to three thousand dollar range um, I have some cards coming to me that I paid over a thousand dollars for in which case I paid Roughly about a hundred dollars sales tax on each, but uh, once I get those, I'll be showing those as well. But in the meantime, uh, you know, I want to thank all the subscribers and um, all the comments. And once again, thanks for watching.